All right, welcome to the next lesson on how to create Among Us in Unity. For this lesson, we're going to be going over the kill mechanic, which will probably take us two lessons to complete. Now, real quick, there's one comment I'd like to make about the future of this series, and I'd love to hear from all of you and get your input on the matter. And that is with regards to what multiplayer API I should use. I was initially planning on using Photon, as that's what I'm most familiar with, but I've already created several tutorials on how to use Photon to create multiplayer games. I've also been receiving a few comments already asking me to use something different for the multiplayer, such as Mirror, another multiplayer API. I personally think this is a wonderful idea, and so I'll look into the possibility of using Mirror for our Among Us series, but I'd still love to hear from all of you whether or not you'd like me to use Mirror over Photon, or if you have any other suggestions and so leave your thoughts in the comments below. All right, so the first thing that we need to do in creating the kill mechanic is to create the ghost animation. So I'm gonna go to our animation window and you'll need to create a new animation, which I've called dead. We then need to add the same two properties that we've added for our other animations, which are for the sprite renderers. Next, we need to add some keyframes to our timeline and I've added a keyframe every 10 frames. We then need to swap out the sprites at each keyframe for one of the ghost sprites from our sprite sheet. And I've just cycled through the four different ghost sprites that we have. And you'll wanna make sure that you do this with both sprite sheets and sprite renderers. And here's what my final animation looks like. Once we have this animation, we then need to go over to our animator window. Here, the new animation state should already be added to your animator controller when you have your player object selected. But we need to now create the transition to this new state. And for this transition, I have it going from any state to our dead state. To create this transition, you can right click on any state, then select make transition, then left click on the dead state. We then need to select the transition and in the inspector, we want to disable has exit time. We then want to expand the settings and set the transition duration to zero so that the transition happens instantly. And then we want to also disable the can transition to self option. The last thing that we need to do is add a condition and for this we'll need to create a new parameter. And so with the parameters tab selected, you'll click the plus sign. And for this parameter, we'll need a bool and I've called it is dead. We can then click the plus sign under conditions in the inspector and change the parameter from speed to is dead and we want to make sure that the value we're checking for is true. Now that's everything that we need for setting up the animator controller. The rest of the kill mechanic we'll do within our player controller script. So we'll open that up in our coding environment. Now before we get started, there's one change that we want to make to this script from our previous video, and this is within the start function. Here inside the start function, we only want to change the color of our player if we're the owner of that player. And so prior to this last line of code, I've added an if statement where we're checking to see if has control equals false, and if it does, then we're just returning. Without this if statement, all the players in our scene would change their color to the static my color variable. We then need to also make a similar change to our update function where I've added the same if statement and return to the beginning of our update function, which will make it so that only the player that we have control of can move. Now, once you have all this, we can then scroll back up to the top to go over our variables. Now just a reminder, everything that's highlighted in green is code that we've already covered in a previous lesson. But as for new variables, I've added a few down at the bottom of our list. The first variable is for implementing roles into our game, such as imposter or crewmate, and this will allow us to make it so that only the imposter can kill other players. So for this variable, it's a serialized field of type bool, and it's called isImposter. The next variable is a new input action, which will be for reading in the player's input when they want to kill another player. And so this is a serialized field of type input action, and I've called it kill. The next variable is for holding the target player which we're planning to kill. And so this variable is of type AU player controller, and it's called target. And the next variable is actually for dealing with our own player if we ever get ghosted. This is of type serialized field, and it's a collider called my collider. And the last variable is a bool called is dead. Once we have these variables created, the first thing that we need to do is subscribe to the event 
of our player's input. For this, we'll do it within the awake function, which is another special function similar to the on enable and start function, only this happens prior to the start function. Inside this function, we're calling our input action, which is kill dot performed. We then have plus equals and then kill target, which is the name of a function that we'll create later on. We then need to enable our input action and we do this within the on enable function. So we have kill dot enable and we need to disable it in the on disable function. So we have kill dot disable. Now once we have this, the next thing that we're going to do is create a function for setting our role. So here below our set color function, I have a public void function called set role. This function has a parameter of type bool called new role. And inside this function, we're setting is imposter equal to new role. Next up, we need to create the special on trigger enter function so that we can create interactions between our players. Inside this function, we have an if statement where we're checking to see if other.tag equals player. If it does, then we want to get the player controller script from the other player. And so I have a local variable of type player controller called temp target, and we're setting it equal to other.get component, and we're looking for AU player controller. We then want to check if we are the imposter. So I have an if statement where we're checking to see if is imposter equals true. If we are, we also want to check to see if the other player is an imposter as well. And so I have if temp target dot is imposter equals true, then we return else target equals temp target. So once we have our target and we receive input from the player, we can then proceed to kill the other player. And so here I have our kill target function, which is the function that's being called by our input action event. This is a void function with a parameter of type input action dot callback context and it's called context. Inside this function, we can check to see what the phase of our context parameter is. So I have if context dot phase equals input action phase dot performed. This is an enum. So if we've received input from our player, we can then check to see if our target is null. So if target equals null, we then want to return else we want to check to see if the target is already dead so if target dot is dead we then return if the target isn't already dead we can then proceed to kill it to do this we're going to first move our local player to the position of the other player so i have transform dot position equals target dot transform dot position we then want to call a new function on the other player that we're going to create right after this and that function is called die so I have target.die, and the last thing that we want to do is remove our target. So I have target equals null. Next up, we'll create our die function. This is a public void function called die, and inside this function, all we have to do is set is dead equal to true. We then need to set the is dead parameter of our animator. So I have my anim dot set bool. I'm passing in the string is dead for the first parameter, and the second parameter is our is dead bool. And the last thing that we need to do is disable our player's capsule collider. And so I have my collider dot enable equals false. And once we have all of this, we can save our script, go back to Unity. We then want to select our player. And in the inspector, we want to first make sure that our tag is set to player, which is a default tag that should already be in your project. We then want to enable has control and enable is imposter. We then need to create a new key binding for our kill input action. So you click the plus sign and just select add binding. We can then double click on the binding and set the path to be the spacebar for now. We then want to select the capsule collider component and drag it into the my collider variable. Now there's one more thing that we need to do for our player prefab and that is we need to add a sphere collider to this object. So you click on add component you can search for sphere collider and add it. We then need to enable is trigger and set the radius to be the range in which you want your player to interact with objects and kill other players. So I've set mine to 1.5. Once you've done this, we can then apply the changes that we've made to our prefab by clicking on the overrides drop down menu and click apply all. Now to test our project, we want to add another player to our scene. So you can select your player prefab from your project window and drag it into your hierarchy. And you can really add as many players as you like, but you'll want to reposition them in your scene. And we're going to select all the other players that we don't want to control. And we're going to disable has control and is imposter. 
Then if you wanted to, you could even change the color of these other player objects. So now let's test out our project. So here you can see that I can only move the one player that I have control over. Then when I approach another player so that they are within my sphere radius, if I click the spacebar, you can see that the other player has turned into a ghost. Now that's everything that we're going to cover in this lesson on how to create the kill mechanic. Now we're not quite done yet, so make sure that you stay tuned for the next video where we'll finish up the kill mechanic. Also make sure that you like this video and subscribe to our channel so you can be up to date with all our latest videos. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.